All right, all right, all right. Now, this is definitely going to be a quick one, a quickie, if you would. We're all a fan of that from time to time. Now, in these rankings of the Marvel Phase 4 filler art Disney Plus releases, man, that is a fucking mouthful. I'm going to have to find a better way to shorten that. I would have to say that the show we're going to... Listen, fuck it. You've seen the thumbnail already. Miss Marvel was easily the hardest show to rank, and for the first time in a long time in this phase, it's not about slander. I mean, making slanderous accusations. But don't worry, I inject that shit into my veins like an insecure man at the gym, so it'll be making its way back sooner than you think. Again, I based all of these rankings on a criteria of top five picks from plot in the story of the show, the characters, and no, not only the main protagonists, but the antagonists as well, and the side and supporting characters, not only in their development, but simply their likability. The writing of the show, and as we all know, my brain cells have been fighting back aneurysms ever since Black Widow, but which grift was the least brain dead? The acting in each and every show, which was by far the hardest area of criticisms, because even for the worst of the worst, Marvel always does pretty incredible with its casting, so that was pretty rough. And last but not least, is it fun? Is it entertaining? Because at the end of the day, that's all we're truly here for. Obviously, as a mid-20-year-old homie, the show was just not made for me. And unlike She-Hulk or Falcon and the Winter Soldier, honestly, those need better nicknames too. Those are so shit. Add that to the list. But in regards to Miss Marvel, that's okay. I honestly didn't mind that Miss Marvel was branching out in a direction that they felt like best suited a new character to be introduced into our already oversaturated MCU cast. Kamala Khan is a high schooler and Pakistani, so it makes complete sense to focus those core traits, characters, and the narrative of the show around those aspects. It's the strength and the core of her character, and even though I myself absolutely vomit at the thought of watching a high school teen drama show, it doesn't automatically make the premise of the show or the character that it's based upon shit. But that also doesn't mean the show can't go without its criticisms, because there's definitely some flaws here. Not only in regards specifically to the show Miss Marvel, we yet again break our own established MCU rules in the set of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I know. Imagine. But I'll get to that. Point is, is Miss Marvel shit? Is it mid? Is it... good? Let's talk about it. The show follows 16-year-old Kamalo Khan and her homie Bruno, who I will be referring to as Henry for the rest of this video, because if you've seen The Walking Dead, God bless your hearts if you are still watching The Walking Dead, he's definitely a Henry. As they manage their way through the treacherous path of unpopularity in high school, dating, family, present and future responsibilities, and well, for one of them, superpowers. The show wastes absolutely no time establishing that the Avengers are celebrities, which makes sense, but again, we'll get to that. With Kamala and Henry attending the first ever Marvel Con, cosplaying as her favorite superhero, Captain Marvel. Mine too, Kamala. Mine too. But I love to call her Plank. Love you, Plank. Is that like a personal attack or something? But with the show only being a measly six episodes, we gotta pick up the pace on that character progression. And as luck will have it, Kamala decides to wear Sean Chi's rings. I mean, her grandmother's not plot device bracelets to the con in order to spice up her own Captain Marvel costume. No need to spice it up, Plank is more than enough. But when an attempt to become popular goes wrong, the bracelets activate causing her to become all sparkly and stretchy. cosmic -y. And just like that, a new superhero is born. An absolutely captivating superhero origin story. No trials, no tribulations, no journey to define their own worthiness or self-sacrifice to showcase why Kamala should be able to wield the powers of her grandmother's bracelets. Shit, even American boy John Walker got more courtesy and grace when introducing why he was chosen to be the new Captain America than this plank simp. But whatever. Obviously in the comics, the character originally had stretching powers like Mr. Fantastic, but apparently that's too hard to CGI, which after watching the recent Marvel shows, I can definitely believe that. And they didn't want to have two future characters with basically similar powers, which is dumbassery within itself because the newly formed Thunderbolts team is just a super soldier squad, but yeah, whatever. With this new reimagining of the character, she can now make light. Reflect light? Emit light? I don't know. We'll just say that she can make cosmic beams that she can place anywhere and honestly get a little creative with. And this wasn't really on my mind until just now, like just now, but they're kind of like the Green Lantern rings and that type of concept. 
with her best friend and science nerd Henry figuring out that the powers don't come from the bracelets themselves, but within Kamala, so definitely pretty different than Shang-Chi. Oh, and she can still stretch, so I guess forget everything that the showrunners said about Mr. Fantastic comparisons. We obviously just wanted to make Kamala as buffed and OP as we can possibly make her to fulfill whatever story that she needs to fill, and so she can stand tall and walk around with my girl Plank. Now stay with me, my good mates. We're going to go ahead and skip right past all this high school shenanigans and all these high school stakes, and we're just going to go ahead and start off with Kamala meeting a boy named Kamran, which Henry doesn't really like, and then he goes and... With Kamala going back in time in order to save her grandmother and save her very existence... What is going on? Oh god. You guys probably missed all of that lead up, huh? Listen, it doesn't really matter. Nothing in this show actually has stakes or repercussions when it comes to the future of Marvel Phase 5 or 6, so just stick with me, mates. To put it all in the most simplistic and brief way possible, Kamala's aunt is an evil immortal being, except not really, that wants Kamala to open up a dimension back to their world, destroying the reality they're in now. Kamala says no, a mortal but not a mortal aunt dies, Kamala's family accepts her, Henry doesn't get the girl, Kamala's maybe a mutant, and Plank switches places with Kamala in the post credit scene to set up the marbles, as well as to give me the best scene in the entirety of the show. Welcome back, Plank. God, I missed you. Now first, let me go ahead and say this. The show is not bad. I've seen bad. Many, many times, unfortunately, damn it and far too frequently for me to consider this show bad. It's just not for me, and I can't reiterate enough how okay that is. If it's actually coming from a place where the showrunners believe that this is the best way to tell the story of Kamala, then honestly, I appreciate the attempt. There was really no message or political agenda. Was there a forefront of a different culture and religion? For sure. But who cares? If this is a part of the character, why not just be accepting or at least aware and understanding that not everyone believes in the same things or lives the same lives? But with that nonsense out of the way, dude, I'll never actually be able to get over the fact that the Falcon and the Winter Soldier told me Sam was broke. <laughs> like, come on, Marvel, this, this is more than She-Hawk comedy. And don't get me wrong, it's been my mindset for years, so it is a little bit personal to me that the MCU is still built in a fictional, foundational world with logistics and common sense, how would the Avengers not be celebrities with huge endorphins like in the show The Boys? Going back to AvengerCon, our characters would be loaded, especially someone like Sam, the literal right-hand man to America's top Avenger. It just makes no sense, and at this point, it's becoming personal. Otherwise, I don't know. It's not like I'm excited or waiting to see Kamala come back to the MCU, but I'm also not not excited. Hmm, I guess a nice casual indifference is how I would summarize my feelings for this show. She was built upon fine, and I'm sure she'll be a heavy focus of the Marvels, so looking forward to that, but that's because of Plank. But as it stands, Miss Marvel is mid, like corn at Thanksgiving. You know what's there, and you're not mad at it. It's just there, you know? But if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to go hit that like button and do all the YouTube stuff and subscribe to the channel to keep up with these rankings. Leave some of your comments down about your personal rankings and about Miss Marvel itself. Miss Marvel is number five, I'm pretty sure, out of seven. Because again, I'm not doing what if. Like, I'm good. Is that like a personal attack or something? But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.